And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location at the Spill the Honey movement here in Malibu, California. We're going to be uh, having a wonderful time tonight. Spill the Honey is a movement all about educating individuals about the Holocaust as well as the Civil Rights Movement. If you're not familiar about Spill the Honey, they're talking about, and we're going to be uh, interviewing special individuals tonight uh, about Spill the Honey, as well as watching a very, very informative uh, video about Spill the Honey. You definitely don't want to miss this because we're going to have a lot of very special guests stopping by. As uh, Some of the names stopping by for the red carpet and being guests on the show is Dr. Clarence B. Jones. He is the, was the personal attorney as well as the advisor for Dr. Martin Luther King. We're also going to have um, the Susan Susan Herschel. She's a professor at Jewish Studies College. She's going to be stopping by on the Sherrod Show. And then lastly, we're going to have Lou Gossett Jr., the legendary actor of Hollywood, but he's also an activist. They're all also going to be giving their opinions from the civil rights movement, as well as things that they have coming up and how to educate yourself on it. So I'm Sherrod, you definitely don't wanna miss our show and episode. So go ahead, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, buckle up, stay tuned to Sherrod Show on Facebook.com as well as at the Sherrod Show. You don't wanna miss this episode tonight. We'll be right back, right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrod Show. I'm your host, Sherrod, live on location at the Spill the Honey movement today. Um, we are educating people about the Holocaust as well as the civil rights. And I have a legend to me to my right. This gentleman is the one that um, cast and produced the, uh, he's a co-producer of tonight's affair. And he's well, say the, I'm not the co-producer of tonight's affair. I'm the assistant to Sherry. I'm the gentleman who invited Louis Gossett Jr. to meet Sherry and thus be in the movie. And voila, here we have it tonight, is that correct? Pardon me? And voila, this is how the magic starts tonight. Right. Now yeah, they call you instrumental in bringing Lewis Gossett Jr., who's an idol of mine and a personal friend. And I said, Lewis, you got to meet Dr. Sherry Rogers, who's doing this amazing thing. I put them together, and now you have this now, amazing you, event. It's amazing. I'm definitely looking forward to There's seeing. There's a reason why. Now, what is the reason why tonight? Well, I was brought up in orphanages. I spent 14 years locked up in an orphanage for the crime of not having parents, and. I met a man who became my father figure. He worked with Martin Luther King, an African American by the name of Robert Mayhawk. In fact, you may have seen an HBO series called uh, Show Me a Hero. And his character was portrayed by Brock Peters. And his name is Robert Mayhawk. So having a father figure who is an African American, because I didn't have a real father, and then knowing how important, also being a Jew, I was compelled to do whatever I could to assist Dr. Sherry Rogers and bring Mr. Lewis Gossett Jr. to Sherry Rogers, and which culminated him being in the film. That's some awesome work. Now, they call, now, your name is the Memory Man. Now, tell everybody back home, why do they call you the Memory Man? Well, I hold the world record. I've been performing as Memory Man. I created the comic book Memory Man. Uh, and as I performed over the last 40 years, I became known as Memory Man because I'm the guy on TV you see memorize everyone's name in the audience or a 50-digit number. If you go to memoryman.com, you'll see all the shows that I've done. Now, what's the art of being able to memorize people's names just off of one time they're telling you? Well, to be aware, to try to take the name and make it tangible, to look at the outstanding characteristic of the person's face and somehow put them together visually and call the person by their name as many times as you can. But most importantly, realize you can't remember everything and never be afraid to ask again. That is all right. Now, we're expecting a wonderful night. I'm, I really appreciate the thing inviting me out tonight. I know you have a very busy night. Thanks for stopping by the Sherrard Show today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And take care, sir. And uh, we're going to have... Thank you for being here and doing all this. We really appreciate you, sir. This is a wonderful evening. You, you just heard from the memory man. We're going to have more right after this on The Sherrard Show. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location here in Malibu, California, for Spill the Honey, the foundation movement that's bringing awareness to the Holocaust as well as to the civil rights movement. I have a gentleman to my right. Um, he is a, uh, the president. Uh, I want to let you tell him about what he does, but he stopped by The Sherrard Show, a legendary gentleman, uh, Mr. Ken Donaldson. Welcome to The Sherrard Show, sir. How are you? Good to see, good to see you. Good to be here this evening. Now, tell a little bit, everybody back home, a little bit about what brought you out tonight. Well, I'm the uh, president and CEO of an organization called Black United Fund of Michigan Incorporated, better known as Buff of Michigan. We're a funding and resource center for nonprofits throughout the state of Michigan that's addressing a need in our community. That's an awesome thing because, you know, you have a lot of... Um, 
uh, uh, non-for-profits, they seem to many times go out of business because they can't get the funding. So how would somebody be able to get funding for their non-for-profit, not saying that maybe the Chicagoland area? Well, we have um, Black United Funds of, of Michigan uh, affiliates across the country, and we do have an affiliate in Chicago. And that's what make our organization so special. We target startups and organizations that don't have a history, and we serve as an incubator to bring them in, provide funding for them, and we will nurture those organizations for a period of three years, and then they will rotate off to the more traditional funding like United Way and some of the larger funding institutions. Wow, now what constitutes a non-for-profit? I know it's kind of a <laughs> foolish question, mm -hmm. but what constitutes, a lot of people can't understand what is a non-for-profit, so tell everybody back home, what constitutes a non-for-profit? Well, I'll give you my definition of a non-for-profit, and if you need something further, then we can go to the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> my, my definition of a non-profit is an organization whose mission is to serve the people and not to make a, a profit as far as a financial profit. So their goal is to raise money to address a concern, not to raise money to, to, uh, to increase their revenue and to just save it. So the monies we raise, our goal is to give it all back. That is an awesome yeah. thing. Now, where would someone be able to uh, reach out to you? I know people are watching right now who want to uh, say, man, I'd like to get this man's number because I have a non-for-profit. I need funding. Where would they be able to reach out to you? Uh, the only thing, I, we're the uh, Black United Fund of Michigan, so we service the state of Michigan. Uh, first thing they would have to do, is they would need to see if there's a Black United Fund in their state. Um, if they're a Michigan uh, organization, they can contact our office or they can go on the website at bufmi.org and uh, we have an application process we uh, we have special programs our programs is financial literacy entrepreneur training and as a matter of fact this year we plan to launch our project aviation where we're going to expose inner city youth to the field of aviation wow what a field man they can be able to have their dreams literally take off huh oh yeah oh yeah that's pretty awesome. Now, one last question before we get in there for tonight's affair. So now, spill the honey um, in the civil rights movement. Now, I know you probably weren't born during the civil rights movement, but what does that mean to you um, honoring Bra Black History Month in regards to the civil rights movement? Well, Black History Month in the civil rights movement uh, simply represents a time that we reflect on that there was an era where we didn't have the freedoms as of regular human beings. And so when we looked at the history of uh, the Jewish people and we looked at the history of African American as well, and, we, and then we saw similar struggles. And so uh, we know our youth today, they may not have the education or the knowledge to know what these two ethnic groups have gone through to get to where they are today. My children right now, I have to teach them about the struggle. You know, they don't, uh, their schools are not, teaching it like it needs to be taught. So we have to make sure that they get that information to know that they're, they're privileged mm -hmm. to be able to have the freedom that they have. And we had African-American and Jewish people to lose their lives uh, to get where, where we are today. That is absolutely correct. And you know, the amazing thing about it, a lot of times youth feel that Martin Luther King Day is just a day off. They don't even know what it means. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And my son, bless his heart, uh, because I sat him down and taught him. The school he attended didn't even celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. He wrote the principal a letter and explained to her why this school should participate. And they have celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday ever since he wrote that letter. Wow, that's a powerful young man. Oh, yeah. That's a powerful young man. Mr. Donaldson, I hope we can have more with you later on this evening. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by the Sherrard Show. This is Ken Donaldson. You definitely want to reach out to him. Yeah. He's doing big things in the Midwest, and he stopped by the Sherrard Show. We'll be right back right after this. And welcome back, to the ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, live on location in Malibu, California. I have a legendary gentleman right to my right. This gentleman is standing by me is Dr. Jones. He was the lawyer as well as a personal advisor uh, to Dr. Martin Luther King, and he stopped by the Sherrard Show. Sir, welcome this Thank evening. So How are you? you? My pleasure. And it's my pleasure to have you on the show tonight. Now, tell me a little bit about what brings you in uh, to town and what brought you to the uh, event tonight. Well, what brings me here to town is that there is a... Uh, a film, film which is being uh, sponsored by um, Lou Gossett's um, Erasism, Found Erasism Foundation and Dr. Sherry Lynn Rogers' uh, Spill the Honey Foundation. And the uh, subject of the film 
is to commemorate the um, historic alliance that uh, developed and that occurred during the civil rights movement between the African American community and the Jewish community. And I wanted to be able to um, be a part of this because um, um, regrettably too many people, both African Americans of this generation and young white people, and of course Jews of this generation, really don't know the extent of the collaboration between the, the uh, Jewish community and the African American community during the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And to put it in um, a political perspective, is that it, um, it probably would not have been possible for us to achieve the success in transforming America had it not been the uh, support and, the p and participation of the Jewish community in America. And so this is what this film seeks to talk about. It's an honor to have you out tonight, sir. So now, back in the 60s in the civil rights era, when you were out um, in full force, what was it like during that time period for those who um, weren't aware, or the history books not being able to explain it in depth? What was it like? Well, I was, I was um, uh, not so much an uh, activist uh, participant on the front lines as an advisor and working, of course, with the greatest man of the 20th century, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. What it was like is to see a uh, large number of uh, people. You know, the civil rights movement in the 60s was um, principally a church-based movement. Mm -hmm. And so you had, um, you had a number of um, uh, Negro ministers of uh, churches in the various southern states who came together actually formally in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference under Dr. King's leadership in order to wage a um, battle to end racial segregation. And what it was like, it was inspiring, it was challenging, and um, I have to be honest, as, as, I, as the time between when the events occurred and years later, uh, I have a deeper appreciation for what occurred then than what I did when I was actually participating. Now, now why would you say that, Dr. Jones, um, some 47 years later from the death of Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, why do you have a great appreciation now? Well, only because I'm, uh, I'm looking back uh, over the years uh, of what happened then. And I, I have a greater sense of balance in terms of the, uh, the magnitude of the contribution. And with respect to the subject matter of this night's, tonight's film, I have a, a really um, more accurate appreciation and measure of just how important uh, to our success was the participation of uh, um, Jews at that time in our movement. Absolutely correct. Uh, Dr. Jones, now have you written any few books? Do you have any books or any material that the newbies or those who want to re-educate themselves can be able to pick up and check out? Well, they can go online. Uh, yes, I wrote a book in two, I co-wrote a book uh, in 2008 uh, called What Would Martin Say? published by uh, HarperCollins. And then another book in uh, 2012, um, uh, Behind the Dream, The Making of the Speech that Transformed the Nation. They can look at that or they can go on the website, the uh, University of San Francisco website, and see uh, me there, as well as on the Stanford University website at the Martin Luther King Jr. Research and Education Institute. They will see my work there also. I'm currently a uh, visiting professor at the University of San Francisco and a scholar in residence at the Stanford University. Dr. Jones, it was an honor for you to stop by the Thank Sherrard you. Show. Thank Enjoy so tonight, this okay. evening. This is uh, the legendary Dr. Oh, Jones Thank stopping by so the Sherrard Show. Uh, we'll so be much, right sir. back right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, having a wonderful time in Malibu, uh, California. For the uh, Spill the Honey, this is the special event about the Holocaust as well as the Civil Rights Movement. And it's just so happened it's Black History Month. And I'm so excited because I have the iconic, legendary Lou Gossett Jr. right to my right. I've been a big fan of this gentleman since I was in diapers, and now he's standing right beside me. Now tell us a little bit about what the Civil Rights Movement means to you. Well, the Civil Rights Movement was a, was a place in history, and it created some very historical people. Clarence B. Jones is with us tonight who wrote a great deal of, of Dr. King's speeches, but there was a whole bunch of those people marching. And they had to make a, an internal decision because they knew that there was going to be violence and some of them would die, and yet they made a decision to move her forward. That was pretty awesome. And a kind of magic happens when you make that decision. The same magic was happening with uh, Nelson Mandela who decided when he came out of prison to smile. Same happened with Muhammad Gandhi. Mm -hmm. So I have an example 
at this particular age, there's no fear of doing anything, especially if it really is true in God's demands, mm. to combine the, the thing that used to be close and history making back in the 30s and 40s, but after the Depression, and the 50s and the 60s, back east, the way I was raised, between the blacks and the Jews, mm -hmm. we can compare slavery and the Holocaust. And God saw fit for us to be in the World War II in the tank battalion, and we rescued them from Buchenwald, to Dachau, mm -hmm. and Auschwitz. Um, they sent them from running from the blacklist, sent them to Estes Kefauver from Tennessee, sent them the intellectual cream of the crop in actors, the, the, the John Garfields, the Morris Konofskis, a man by the name of Gustav Bloomberg. Uh, they ran to New York to a sympathetic Board of Education man by the name of William Jansen, and he sent them to Brooklyn and to uh, Staten Island and to, to uh, Long Island. And I had uh, science professors in my third grade as my gr third grade teachers, and I grew up with their children. A society that came from that was before the cell phone was the old ladies in the windows. There was a, there was a neighborhood rule, I'm going to tell your mama. And if my parents didn't get home in time, I'd go next door and have some gefilte fish, some corned beef and cabbage, some of that, depending on who was home. We didn't have much to play with, but a broomstick handle and a, and a ball. And the girls had chalk and rope, and we were in seventh heaven. Wow. And there was no distinguished of color. It was an ideal, wonderful neighborhood, and it became a, a political renaissance that gave birth to the Sandy Koufaxes and the Barbara Streisands and Jackie Robinsons and myself and Lou Wasserman. And we became the standard on Broadway and sports. And then it was broken up because we were getting too good and too powerful. Mm -hmm. It's time to return. To start by example that all cultures, we must do that again today. So the number one situation is not civil rights anymore. Mm -hmm. It's much more critical than that. It's the salvation of mankind. And number one on everybody's agenda in order to solve it is our number one job is to make sure that this planet returns to its pristine shape. Wow. The oceans that have to have fresh fish without chemicals, mm -hmm. without diseases and plastic. And we can restore the, grain for the rainforest. Uh, uh, the uh, air's got to be clear. We've got to stop buying water out of bottles. We've done this to this planet, so we need to do that again. Wow. And that single act of us all cooperating in that area is called spill the honey. If we're doing anything else, we all may as well be in this... Uh, 747 airplane, you know, and it's the 30,000 feet, and it's about to crash. Mm -hmm. People decide to play in the fight over who's going to be in first class. <laughs> That's what the headlines are telling me. Wow. Now, now um, Mr. Gossett, you know, as Martin Luther King Day mm. comes and goes, and also in the history books, you know, it's not being taught like it used to be. You know, yeah. everything when I was growing up used to stop on Martin Luther King Day, yeah. the uh, special holidays that represent black history, as well as the Jewish holidays. We were educated on those. Now these kids walking down the street with their pants sagging down. They don't, they don't honor job. those days. That's our job. You know, I have my two granddaughters who sit next to each other texting one another. I take their phones away. They look at that like I took their left arm away. I said, that's your sister. Look at her and talk to her. You know, but uh, it's, it's a lesson. They really, expect, you know, they might object, but they really appreciate us paying attention to them because that the generations have been broken, and that's why you have the problem. We never broke our generations. Wow. And our, our neighborhoods have gotten bananas because we, we've broken the generations. What those kids are doing with their pants down and shooting those guns, it's like a baby in a high chair in a, in a kitchen, you know, with the food's on the table and mom's on the phone too long. Mm -hmm. The food's going on the floor. That's absolutely when are you going to stop me? Mm. Tell me what to do. Wow. And you know the amazing thing about it, sir, is that, you know, like when... I, I will never be upset about the spankings and the beatings I got oh, from no. my neighbor, from my mom, my dad, and the teachers. Well, my grandma told me one lie. She only lied to me once. You know what she said? Right. It's going to hurt me more. Than <laughs> hurt me. <laughs> remember that too, I remember I that. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I could never understand it then. I still don't understand it now. Lie, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mr. Gossett, you know, one thing that's amazing, I'm so honored because, you know, uh, my publicist will tell you this, I've been honoring legends of the music industry as well as uh, legends in life, people that I've grown up listening mm -hmm. to and watching on the big screen TV, such as the Stevie Wonders, oh, um, the uh, Impressions, mm -hmm. the Jerry Butlers, yeah. the Gene Chandler. I with, with uh, Mr. Richard the other day at the City Hall. Mm -hmm. Wow, boy, everything he wrote moved my life. Lionel Richie. He had me dancing uh -huh. on ceilings and in the streets. Let me saying hello. But you know, I'll, I'll ain't say this. The bricks part, they gonna that <laughs> Yeah, well, did you had a fro in the uh, back in the seventies no, at the Commodore? Fro. No, <laughs> this has been a long time. Got a little bit coming on the side. I was out there though. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Gussett, now I could you in the class 
and everybody who uh, who really watch great movies, I put you in a class with Sidney Poitier. Oh, yeah, that's my man. That's my hero. Because you are my hero as well. Because I'm um, seeing you in the early in the uh, your career started in the 50s. Is that correct? 1953. And so, just uh, being a black man in a in a film, a major film back then, was absolutely unheard of. Is that correct? It was an it was an event. But before that, I'd seen James Edwards and Home of the Brave, and uh, before that, I saw Canada Lee and Lifeboat. And that's the, those are the bunches that ran from the blacklist, those particular people, right. Tallulah and all those guys. Right. And before that, I saw Rex Ingram playing the genie. Mm -hmm. And before that, uh, people didn't know that he was black, but he was the, the prince in Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. And uh, we've been going around for a while. And of course, then there's Oscar Michaud and, 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 and Darcy's uh, sister Ruby and, mm -hmm. and Hattie and Butterfly McQueen. Wow. Uh, just, uh, we need to know. Wow. Mr. Goss said, I will not take much more of your time, but I would love to have a more sit down and get some knowledge. This is history. This is wisdom right here. Um, you're not going to get this in just a history book. You're talking wisdom right here. Mr. Goss said, thank you for you. stopping by the Shabar Show. God bless you too, sir. Shabbat shalom, yo. Amen. Definitely, definitely stopping by the Sherrard Show. This is the legendary Mr. Lou Gossett Jr. We really appreciate him stopping by the Sherrard Show. And we want to thank you all for um, allowing me to come into your living room this evening um, with the Spill the Honey, you know, a wonderful event about, you know, keeping black history alive through the Holocaust as well as with the Civil Rights Movement. We had some great guests. I want to thank Lou Gossett Jr. for stopping by, Clarence B. Jones, Holly D. Maxwell, and all those wonderful people that stopped by the Sherrard Show. So stay tuned on. Uh, next week when we're live from the Oscars um, we're going to have some very very special interviews. Denzel Washington is going to stop by, uh, George Clooney, just to name a few that's going to be stopping by the show. You definitely don't want to miss that live at the Oscars next week. I'm Sherrard. Have a wonderful evening. See you next week. God bless you.